Okay, before we get into the project, I'm just going to run through a few of the items I'm going to be using. Now I'm going to be using a terracotta pot. Now you can use a concrete pot. Uh, I'm going to be using terracotta and this particular pot is not the one I'm going to be mosaicing onto. This is just going to be for demo purposes because it's smaller and it fits better on this bench. And also I'm going to be just demoing this when it comes to sealing it. Now when you're breaking up crockery, it does have sharp edges on it. So in most cases, the edges are hidden by the grout, but in some cases it may not be. So you're going to need a file or some sandpaper just to take off that sharp edge. And you can use one or both of them, whatever suits you. Now for breaking the, the plates, you can use a hammer. Uh, in most cases, most people will use uh, double wheeled nippers. They're the Lepin at double wheeled nippers and I use those. But for those people that don't have any, then I'm going to actually show you how to break the plates up with a hammer. You're going to need a container to put the sealant into and then paint it onto your pot. I'm using Bondal uh, Pot and Ornament Sealer. You can also use Bond Creek Sealer as well, whichever one suits you, or maybe you have some other sealers uh, around your area that you could use instead of these anyway. There's lots on the market, but you want a penetrating sealer. Okay, you're also going to need uh, gloves uh, when you're grouting. You're going to also need a P2 or an N95 rated dust mask because you will be working with grout and grout contains silica. Crockery contains silica and you don't want to be breathing it in. So by using an N95 or a P2 dust mask, it will filter out a lot of the uh, silica down to a certain size particle. So it's certainly better than using one that's not rated at all. You're also going to need protective eyewear whatever you have around that's going to protect your eyes. You're going to need a range of different plates uh, that you're going to be breaking up. Now, whatever you do, try and avoid the ones with crazing in, which is crazing is like on the surface of the plate because that means that the glaze is already compromised. So try and avoid using plates with crazing in. For inside, it's not an issue, but for outside, I'd prefer to actually avoid that. Now, you can also use things like glass gems or um, you know, other, other glass vitreous tiles or whatever you'd like, as long as it's going to be suitable for outside. So you can add interest to your design as well. Now for the adhesive, I'm going to be using SMX Hybrid Polymer, which is this particular one here. And uh, this is very similar to silicon, but it doesn't contain the solvents. So this is going to be better for me to use than if I was to use silicon. Now you can also use thin set or uh, a cement based adhesive as well, that's not a problem. But because I'm going to be using mirror tiles uh, for the top edge, I'm going to uh, be using this because it needs to be neutral curing. Otherwise, if you don't, the reflective backing on the actual mirror tile can be affected. So by using a neutral curing adhesive, which is what the glaziers use, uh, then that can certainly protect uh, that reflective backing. And it needs to be, if you're going to be, be using it on the uh, mirror tiles, it needs to be over the whole back of the mirror tile because the grout can also affect that reflective backing. Uh, so they're the things I'm going to be using. Now I could also use a combination. I could also use a cement based adhesive thin set around the bottom part of the pot and then just use this around the top part for the mirror tile. But I figured I won't chop and change. I'll just use this for the whole project. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, let's get into it. I'll now show you how to seal the pot. I've got my pot here. All I'm going to do now is dip the paintbrush into the Bondal ornament sealer and just liberally paint it on.
Okay, that's done. And see, we needed the gloves for this as well. Wait for that to cure. Be about uh, 24 hours and then I'll start mosaicing it. Okay, I've got the plate on an old towel here. I'm gonna turn the plate over and I'm gonna fold the towel back on itself and that will protect me as well as the plate from when the hammer hits. Now what we're looking at is to get pieces around the size of about a 50 cent piece for that size pot that I'm doing. Although if you're doing a smaller pot, you'll need smaller pieces. And then all we need to do is give it a solid few hits. There you go. And we can feel our way around to see where it needs further breaking. And then we open it up and have a look. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to move some of these because I'm not using the centers in these. They can be kept for another day. And now what I'm going to do is break them up smaller again. Be careful you don't hit your hand or your finger. And what you can do is actually you can, um, see that's, that's a really good size there. So we'll put that aside. And what you can do is you can actually take some of these out and break them up singly like if we wanted to. We could have those ones in there, take those ones out and that one out, put those out. And be careful, the pieces are sharp. And then we could just break those ones there. And you might find that might be easier for you. There you go. So it's just a matter of uh, keep going until you have the amount that you want. And I have here some that have been left over from other projects and I've already uh, broken some up for this particular project as well. Now, when you are about to mosaic on your terracotta pot, some people will do it this way. And I have a couple of plates here so it doesn't roll around. Some people will turn it up and do it this way because uh, this, by starting around this rim here, they can build up without the uh, pieces uh, sliding down. Other people will do it this way on a Lazy Susan, so they can just spin it around and do uh, where they need to do it. And that's another way, you only have to make sure that you keep your pieces away from the bottom. You don't wanna put them right on the edge, it has to be a little bit away. But for me, I like to actually do it this way because, and I'll just put that on there so it's secure, uh, because I can see exactly uh, what I'm doing and I can also turn it around. Now, when you've got your terracotta pot and it's all ready to go, you just need to think about your design because although we're using um, a lot of bits of crockery, uh, you may, as I said earlier, want to add things like glass gems and all sorts of other tiles and things like that. You just need to sort of think about how you're wanting to do it. Are you going to just mosaic this area and paint the top? Or are you going to mosaic the whole thing? Are you going to do the top band in a different color? Or maybe you're going to do a bottom band around here in a different color. What I'm actually going to do is I actually had some of these very small spoons. I cut the top off or, or the top of the hand, handle off and I just curved a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is actually put it in here and then put that piece on top there, just to make it a little bit different. And then I'll tile around here. Now I'm thinking about maybe using some mirror and putting that around that band. I'm not really sure about that, but that's not really critical. I don't need to know that now because that's not going to affect my overall design here. Now you'll notice on some of your pieces, you may have a nice curved uh, top here or it's a very smooth edge. Now you may want to think about using those around the top if you're doing it this way because that will make sure that there's no sharp areas around the top there. So you know you've just got to think about it and think okay where, how am I going to do this? Am I going to do it that way, that way? And also uh, I tend to keep these too which are the it's the foot off the plate like this area here and I tend to keep those because they make it very interesting to use in your pot as well. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is because this will uh, interfere with where I'm putting my pieces of crockery. So I'm going to apply this spoon now here and then I'm going to also add this at the top here because then I can work around those areas. 
and I've marked on the uh, top here a third. Now I'm only going to do this one here because when I turn the pot around, uh, I don't want this one to fall off. So I'm only going to do a section at a time. So we're just going to apply a little bit in here. And you won't need a you won't need a lot. And we're just going to put a little bit down here as well. That's it. And then we're going to push that on. And then I'll get this piece and put up here as well. Now I'm going to use a pair of tweezers. If you've got a pair of those laying around, that will come in handy for this area. Now, why am I adding a spoon? Well, no reason, just for something a bit different. And I think it would add interest to the pot as well. And that's the name of the game is that you just want to create it to what you think you would like it to be. So now what I'm going to do is, and some people also adhere their adhesive to the piece and then stick it down. Others will adhere it to the actual substrate and then stick the piece down. There's no right or wrong. It's just what you feel comfortable with. Sometimes I do both, it just depends. Yeah, that works. So in this case, I will actually add it to this piece instead of the pot, because it's quite a large piece. We're just adding it in there. And you don't have to use a lot of, of this adhesive, but it's just that this is a hollow piece. And I could have actually broken that down a bit more, but this will work fine. There you go. Piece in there. Perfect. Now the other thing is that uh, when it comes to our grout lines, which is the piece, which is the area in between, we don't want to have wide grout lines. We really want to go around, you know, three mil, maybe five mil maximum. It's not terribly critical as long as you don't go, uh, you know, extremely wide. Uh, but I think that works quite well if we go to there. And when you're applying your adhesive, you don't want to fill up the grout line with adhesive. Uh, you really want to keep that open for the grout uh, when you come to grouting it. So we're looking kind of like that. So I just thought I'd point that out before I get too far into it. Okay, that's coming along quite okay. Uh, like I say, the important thing is the ridge here and also this area here, keeping it away from the bottom. Okay, I finished the bottom part of the pot. I've added some of the uh, bottom part of the plate to the foot. I've added that and uh, there's a few of those throughout just to add a bit of interest uh, to the actual mosaic. I've also added the spoons and some of these glass gems just to break it up a bit. I think it's turned out really quite well. The grout will bring it all together. And as far as the rim goes, some people paint their rims. Uh, some people add, uh, you know, continue their mosaic up and go around the rims, which is fine. I'm thinking about adding some mirror around the top there. These are mirror tiles, but I also have them in strips. So I'll probably use the strips because these are slightly larger and I don't want it to go up higher than that rim. So I'll probably uh, use the strips because they're the perfect size. So that's what I'm up to. Now next, uh, after I've added the mirror strips to the top, uh, we'll come back and grout it. Okay, I'm all ready to go. Now I have covered up the spoons with some masking tape. Uh, most times I haven't worried about it, but because these were very shiny, I decided to cover them up with some uh, masking tape. Now I've got my grout mixed. Now, as always, make sure you follow the directions of your grout because on the packaging, because you normally have to let it slake for a few minutes, like five or 10 minutes, which is important for the chemical reaction to occur uh, with the powder and the water. So just, uh, just make sure you do read those instructions. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to this and then uh, I will finish it off uh, with, with grouting it all over and I'll do that on a, um, a lazy Susan because it'll make it easy but for the for the uh, idea of this video uh, I thought it would be better to actually uh, do it here flat so you can see it and all I'm going to do is just now apply it and it is kind of messy but it's good messy and all you're going to do 
is rub it in to all those areas so you cover all those grout lines. And you take your time, within a certain amount of reason, but you're pushing it in. And that's basically all you do. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and uh, uh, once it starts hazing over, which is gonna take probably 10 or 15 minutes, and then that's when you then start cleaning the grout off when it starts hazing over. And then when you've, when you've basically done an area, you can take off a lot of the excess grout and put it back in your container. Don't throw it out, you put it in your container because when we clean it up, we may accidentally pull out some grout out of those areas. So it's good to always have some spare. How much you mix up, how long is a piece of string? I like to have more than what I need rather than uh, run short. So anyway, I'll come back uh, once I've grouted all this and then I'll show you how to clean it off. Okay, it's all hazed over. You can tell uh, by looking at the uh, pieces of crockery that the grout has kind of dried on it a bit. You don't want it to dry out because it will be very hard to remove the grout. So it's very important that you, that you actually start cleaning it off once it's started to haze and uh, then we can go in with a final clean. So I've got a wet sponge here. So all you do is you go in and you just now wipe it over. And the same with the, the glass. Now some people don't like using, and you keep rinsing it out. Uh, some people don't like grouting over the mirror because they believe sanded grout scratches it, but I've never had that issue. And you can see that kind of like starts bringing everything back to being really nice. And it, you know, in some areas you might have to dig out a few pieces because the crockery is not all totally flat. And you can go in after this time and then you can start cleaning up a bit more. And that's why we've got the extra grout there in case, just in case I start pulling out any uh, out of the grout lines, I can just go in and patch it up. And I, I normally put a cover over the top like that just goes over the top there so it doesn't dry out. And I've dropped my sponge. And that's really all we do. And we just do that to get the bulk of it off. And don't ever wash your grout or your adhesives down on your, uh, in your sink, your laundry sink or your kitchen sink, whatever you do, because if it's a cement-based adhesive, it will block up your pipes. Keep rinsing your sponge out. And you want to get rid of as much water out of that sponge as possible. So as you can see, it's starting to take a bit of a shape now. Okay. So I'll continue doing this, just wiping it down, and then we'll come back uh, for probably the second last or the last clean on it. And uh, we'll see how we go. It started to haze over again, as you can see here. Now we're going to go in for another uh, moist sponge, but just a, a little bit, and then we're gonna use a dry rag. Rinse that out. And like I say, if you see anything that, uh, you know, some of your pieces that are a little bit buried, well, you just dig them out a little bit. Use a needle or part of a knife or whatever you want, just whatever's handy to you, really. Done the water, I think that's enough. Another dry rag. This is what really helps bring it up. And it looks so nice with a plant in it. And even after this, uh, you know, you can do another bit of a clean if required, but I think this will probably get it pretty well right.
Don't forget to keep turning the rag over. I mean, you'll pick up pieces all the way through, that's fine. I mean, you can leave them, but the thing is, I like to have my lines to be really nice and neat. All right, I'll come back once I've cleaned this up and then give you a final look at it, all cleaned up. Well, there you go. I think it's turned out really, really well and uh, grouting the different heights of the plates and the uh, foot of the plate wasn't an issue. That was pretty easy. Well, anyway, I hope you've taken something away from this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comments section on the YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.